this this is my first extended road trip um, and the characters that I've met along the way some of them I met prior to the valley and I've re-encountered here some of them I met here in the valley but they're all I, I feel like I'm very blessed they're all very powerful individuals they're people who just kind of leap off the page at you in their personality right they're people that you want to engage with and to know better and they're people who inspire right and there are these people who climb really quietly and really confidently and there are people who just throw themselves into it with everything they have and both of those are incredibly inspiring right all of these people that i've met and that i've gotten to learn from and to climb with they've all brought something new to the way we all the way i live my life and the way i climb to canadian climbers el cap and the valley itself are pretty legendary I think they're legendary all over the world, right? Um, I'd heard about this place long before I ever came. And I came for the first time with a partner who was a much stronger climber than I was. And I, I got to experience Yosemite in a way that I couldn't have given it to myself. Um, and so it's been a real gift to be back as a better and stronger climber, as someone who can actually you know, hold their own within their own party. And the valley, the valley has a kind of mystique and an aura to it that's really difficult to get anywhere else. El Cap Bridge, right over there. <laughs> it, it's a place that you can't walk three feet without seeing someone. The meadow itself, the meadow was one of my first places I came to when I first came here. Uh, we came and we got straight on Half Dome, came off walked into the meadow for our rest day and ran into no less than four people, uh, including our mutual friend, uh, who I hadn't seen in a long time or who my partner hadn't seen in a long time. And it was, it's always a good reminder to understand just how integrated our community is, however geographically dispersed we are. Discovering climbing was for me probably a multifaceted thing. Uh, I, a previous partner of mine was a gym boulderer and he used to take me to the gym and we used to pull on plastic and I thought, there is something wrong with you people. This is not fun at all. I spend my time in sign and I don't understand. And then, then I started to trail run. And then I discovered my own personal truth to climbing, which is the high and the wild places. The places that you are dependent on you and your partner's decisions. And those decisions mean life or death, really, when you get down to it. Um, and the beauty of those places and how blessed we are that that's a part of our lives, that we can reach out and access that, I think that's fantastic. And so for me, it was discovering that high and that wild and that mighty area that blew my mind and said, this is what I want to do. I, uh, I took a 15 meter fall to a rock ledge. Uh, I broke my pelvis and I went back two or three months later and reclimbed the same route. It was uh, it was a little bit of an emotional trip to get back there. It wasn't it wasn't an easy thing in my tiny little head. I, I don't I don't think it's the particular thing that you're climbing that makes a difference. I think it's the climbing itself. I think it's the physical and mental puzzle that puts together how you get up something, which is so individual for all of us. For all of us, it's something different. It's a different driver. It's a different piece of the puzzle. And for me, it's a, it's a focus, especially when it's run out or when it's consequential or when there's, when bad actually has a very bad outcome. Um, everything just kind of talks right down into that five and a half foot box. And that's when it all makes the most sense. When it's just one foot and one hand and one foot and one hand. And the idea of consequence goes because it has to go because you can't bother with it. And I think it's, I think it's one of the things that we're blessed with the most in our lives because socially, we tend to have our choices made for us by our society, by our culture, by our friends, by our partners, by our parents. And people make decisions kind of five, 10, 20 years out and all of a sudden you're reduced to your most basic and elemental self 
and I think that's worthwhile.